Hi Math 30s. This video is on Lesson 1 in the unit on permutations and combinations. You'll find it on page 371 in your workbook. The lesson is called the Fundamental Counting Principle. If you look at this first class example, what it says is it says a manufacturer makes a wooden toy and the toy consists of three different parts. So there's a top of the toy, the middle of the toy, and the bottom of the toy. And the top of the toy could be three different sorry, it could be four different colors. So the top could be red, white, blue, or pink. The middle of the toy could be these three colors, and the bottom of the toy could be yellow or green. The question is, how many different combinations of toys could you make um, given these three parts and the number of colors in each part? So there's two ways that you could do this. One of the ways is creating a tree diagram. So we've got the top of the toy, the middle of the toy, and the bottom of the toy. The top of the toy, remember it said, could be the colors red, white, blue, or pink. So you're going to create, for the top, it could be red, white, blue, or pink. Then the middle could be orange, purple, or black. So what sort of happens is if the top is red, let's say, then the middle could be orange, purple, or black. And that's going to happen for every color. So the top could be white, and then the middle, again, could be orange, purple, or black. We could have a toy that has a blue top, and then the middle, we could choose between orange, purple, and black. And the third option is we could have a toy with a pink top, and then the middle could be orange, purple, or black. From here, we've got to do the bottom of the toy. So the bottom, there's only two choices for the bottom of the toy, yellow or green. So what that means is we could have a combination of a red top, orange middle, and then the bottom could be yellow or green, right? We could have a red top, pink middle, and then the bottom, yellow or green. We could have a red top, a black middle, and then bottom, yellow or green. So there are six possible toys that we could make with a red top. These would be the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then it's going to work the same for the white top. Right, because we could have a toy with a white top, orange middle, and then the bottom, yellow or green. We could have a white toy, pink middle, bottom, yellow or green. And same with um, white top, black middle, yellow or green bottom. With a white top, again, one, two, three, four, five, there's six possible toys that could be made, or six possible combinations with a white top. There was six possible combinations with a red top. If you do the same for blue, so finish off your tree diagram, you're going to have six combinations of toys that could be made starting with a blue top, and six combinations of toys starting with a pink top. The question is, how many total combinations of toys could you create? And that would be 24. So if you add the 6, 6, 6, and 6, there are 24 possible combinations, or 24 possible toys. Tree diagrams, you will not do on a test. On a test, you're going to use what's called the fundamental counting principle. And you'll find, once you get the hang of it, it is way easier than a tree diagram. So what you have to do with the fundamental counting principle is you have to ask yourself, how many stages does the task have? So the task is, there has to be a top for the toy. There has to be a middle for the toy. And there has to be a bottom of the toy. So creating this toy would have three different stages. 
what you put for each stage is you put the number of choices for that stage. So for example, how many choices do I have for the top of the toy? Red, white, blue, or pink. The top of the toy, there's four different choices that I could have for the top of my toy. Then you go to the middle stage. The middle of the toy, how many choices do you have? It could be orange, purple, or black. So you've got three choices. And then the bottom of the toy, how many choices? You've got yellow or green, that would be two choices. The number of ways to complete the task, right, of making a toy is completed by multiplying the numbers of choices in each stage. So it would be four times three, which is 12, and 12 times two, which is 24. There are 24 possible ways to create this toy. I'll do in your homework with you um, the one with the tree diagram and show you this again. If you flip to the next page, um, it says, in the previous example, the toy consisted of part one, which is the top, and the toy needed the middle, and the toy needed the bottom, right? In math, when you see the word and, so it needs a top, and a middle, and a bottom, and implies multiplication. That's why I multiplied those three stages together. Let's look at this question. A math 30 quiz consists of eight multiple choice questions. What that means is there would be eight stages. So here's question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's your test with your eight questions. Each question has four choices to choose from. So for question one, I've got, it could be A, B, C, or D. So I've got four choices to choose from for question one. For the second question, there's four choices. In each question on this test, you have four possible choices that you could choose from. So how many different sets of answers are possible if you write an eight question test? It would be four to the power of eight, and if you type that in your calculator, you would get 65,536. Now we're going to get into something called um, the fundamental counting principle. So it's going to be the stages, but it's going to involve something called restrictions. So the first question here, it says, Eric has been assigned the task of determining how many odd four-digit numbers exist. So I'm just going to box this in. Odd four-digit numbers. A four-digit number is going to give you four different stages, right? And then you have to say to yourself, okay, which digit in any number determines if the number is even or odd? Like if I give you a 10-digit number, where do you look to see if the number is even or odd? And it's always this last digit here. This is going to determine if the number is even or odd. So I could have a number ending in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. That would make my number odd. So how many choices do I have for this last stage? 5. Because there's 5 numbers that would make my 4-digit number odd. Okay, so what it says is it says the first step of his work is shown. Explain the reasoning for why he put a 5 here. So he set up four stages because there's, it's a four-digit number. And the reason why he put the five here is because the last digit determines if your number is even or odd. So the last digit The reason why he put the five is because these are the digits that would make your number odd. One, three, five, seven, or nine. So this is, the restriction is it's odd, and there's five possible numbers. Then what it says is it says the se second step of his work is shown. Explain why there was nine choices of numbers here. So what you have to realize about numbers is if you look up here, it gives you an example. It says the number 5276, that is a four-digit number. This number here, 0267, is not a four-digit number. That's a three-digit number, right? 
Um, so what it's saying is you can't start a number with zero. I'll give you a different example. If I give you the number 15 and I say, how many digits is that? It's two digits. If I just tack on some zeros in front of the number, that doesn't change the number. It's still a two digit number. The number's 15. So you cannot start with zero. So this makes it odd. And this guy, for a number, we cannot start with zero. When you have, uh, the digits are zero through nine, so there's 10 possible digits. If you take zero out of the game, you've got nine possible choices of numbers that can go there. Then part three says complete his work to determine how many odd four digit numbers exist. So let's figure this out. Four digit number, four stages. The restriction is it must be odd. So we deal with our restrictions first and we've shown above that there are five choices of numbers that would make my four digit number odd. We cannot start with zero. So there's nine possible choices of numbers that can go there. For this middle term, it doesn't give any restrictions. The number could, I can choose for this next stage, zero through nine. And the reason why I could do that, so some students will say, well, can you put a zero there? Well, of course, because three, zero, zero, seven, that's a four digit number. So it could be any of the 10 digits can go here. And then same with the third stage. My choices are zero through nine, 10 digits. To calculate how many odd four digit numbers exist, you multiply those together and you're going to get 4,000 500 odd four digit numbers. Let's complicate this a little bit by figuring out how many num how many four digit odd numbers exist, but we could have no repeating digits. So what would that look like? You set up your stages. Four, it's still a four digit number. And it's still, so it's still four digits and it's still going to be odd. Okay, so we've got five numbers to choose from to go here that would make the number odd. If we could have no repeating digits, here's what would happen. There are 10 possible numbers that can go here minus zero, right? Can't put zero there. So that's nine possible numbers to go there. And I need to take out whatever number I put here. So I had nine numbers or nine choices to go here minus whatever I placed here. That is eight possible numbers are left to choose from to go into that first stage. In the second stage, zero is back in the game, right? You could put a zero in your second stage. So remember that there's 10 digits total minus you can't have any repeating digits. So I, I've placed two digits, so I need to subtract two. There's eight possible choices to go there. For this third stage, again, there are 10 digits total minus, they don't want any repeats. I've placed one, two, three numbers. So I've got seven remaining numbers that would go in that spot to choose from. If you multiply that together, you are going to get 2,240 different possible odd four digit numbers that have no repeats. Let's look at class example four, which is a license plate question. So there's gonna be certain questions that um, you just have to be really familiar with. License plate questions are one of them. So what it says is it says, uh, license plates in an African country consists of a letter. So it starts with a letter. So I'm going to create that stage. And it's a letter, it says other than I or O. So it's going to be a letter here, not I or O. So the first thing you need to know is that in the alphabet, there are 26 letters. It is telling me that two letters are taken out of the game, right? I can't place an I or an O in that first stage. So I'm gonna take two letters out. That leaves me with 24 possible letters that can go there. 
So it consists of a letter followed by three digits. So after the letter, you've got three numbers. Number, number, number. Here's the restriction. The first digit cannot be zero. Okay, so if it can't be zero, that means it could be the numbers one through nine. So there are nine choices to go there. That's the only restriction for this first one. It can't be zero. They don't give any other restrictions for these uh, numbers here. So you've got 10 digits to choose from there and 10 digits to choose from here. After our three numbers, it says it's followed by any two letters. Okay, so we're gonna have two more letters which are not repeated. So this is gonna be a letter and this is gonna be a letter. In this stage here, there are 26 letters that could possibly go there. But once I place one of the letters from the alphabet, that leaves 25 letters left over. If you multiply all the choices in each stage, you are going to get 14 million and 40,000. So that means there are 14,040,000 possible license plates that would start with a letter, not I or O, followed by three digits with this restriction, followed by two more letters that aren't repeating. 14 million choices. Here is your homework questions, and I'm going to do a couple with you. So I just want you to not do number four, and for six, uh, don't do part four, number six. So we'll set up some of this together. Okay, here, uh, this would be the tree diagram question for number one. It says a football team has the following kit. So they're gonna get a jersey, they're gonna get pants, and they're gonna get socks, all right? So you, they're gonna get one of each. And the jerseys, there's two different choices of jerseys, red or black, right? So they could get a red jersey or they could get a black jersey. They could wear a red jersey, and there's three choices of pants, white, red, or black. They could have the black jersey, and again, three choices of pants with that, white, red, or black. Then they have one of two sock choices, red or white. So one combination is red jersey, white pants, red socks. Red jersey, white pants, white socks. That's the second combination. Red jersey, red pants, red socks. That's a third. Red jersey, red pants, white socks. That's a fourth. The number of choices that I could make with just the red jersey is six choices. There, or there's six possible combinations. With the black top, you've got to do the same thing. So create your socks, your red and white socks here. And again, you would have 12, or sorry, uh, six possible combinations. The total number of combinations of uniforms that I could make is going to be 12. Setting it up using the fundamental uh, counting principle, you do your stages. So what would the stages be? Well, the first stage is going to be a jersey. And the jersey is either red or black, so there's two choices in that stage. The second stage is pants. White, red, or black. Three choices of pants. The third stage is socks. And there are red or white socks, two choices there. You multiply the number of choices in each stage, and you are going to get 12.
steps of the same number, whether you're doing your tree diagram or whether you're doing the fundamental counting principle, you will not do the fundamental counting principle on a test. It would take way too long. Or sorry, you would not do a tree diagram. You will always do fundamental counting principle. Number two, how many ways are there of arranging six different books side by side on a shelf? So if you have six books, you have six stages. What you need to imagine is that you've got six books just laying on the floor. You need to pick up a book and put it in that first spot on your shelf. So how many books do you have to choose from? If there's six books on your floor, you've got six books to choose from. If you take one of the books and you put it in this spot, how many books are left to choose from to go here? There'd be five books left. Here, there's four books to choose from, three books to choose from, two books to choose from. Once you've placed five of your books, you've got one book left, and that has to go there. You multiply those numbers together, and there are 720 different ways that if you have six different books, you could arrange them on a bookshelf. Okay, number three. There's a high school that has seven entrances. So imagine our high school and there's seven different doors to come into the high school. That means there's seven doors to leave the high school. It said, let's say you're just coming in for math class. In how many different ways can a student coming for math enter and exit through any entrance? So no restrictions. So you have to sort of think about this, like how many stages would there be? So you get to school and you need to enter the school. You're staring at your school, there's seven doors. You do your class, and then you have to leave the school. There are seven doors to choose from. So if, if you have a school with seven doors, you got seven choices here, and you got seven choices when you leave. Seven times seven is 49. So a school with seven doors or seven entrances, there's 49 different combinations or ways that you could enter or exit the school. B, they're going to introduce a restriction. So it says, how many different ways can a student enter the school and exit through a different entrance? Okay, so you first have to enter your, your school. You walk up to the school, you have seven choices. You pick one of those doors and you go in. When you exit the school, how many doors could you choose from if it can't be the door that you entered through, right? Because it says enter the school and exit through a different entrance. So the number of choices you would have if you can't leave from the door you came in, there's six. Seven times six is 42 different ways. Last one for C. Okay, it says, uh, how many different ways can you enter and exit through the same entrance? So here's how you would set up C. You walk to your school and you need to enter. How many doors do you have to choose from? Seven. Then you need to leave your school and you, it has to be the same door that you came through. So you had seven doors to choose from when you get there. You picked one of those doors, so you must exit from that same door. There is only one choice there. It's the door that you entered. Seven different ways that you could enter your school and leave out that exact same door. Number five. I have 30 students in my class. Somebody's gonna get first prize, somebody's gonna get second, and somebody is going to get third. How many ways can I award first, second, and third place? Those are the three stages. This is first place, this is second, this is third. If I have 30 students in my class, there's 30 possible students that could get first place. But once that student gets first place, there's only 29 left. 
that could possibly get second. And then once I've got my first and second place, there's 28 remaining students that could get third place. If you multiply those three, the numbers of choices in each stage together, there's 24,360 different ways that I could give first, second, and third to 30 students. Here's how it changes if those 30 students have a math, so they go out, they've got a math class and one student gets the math prize. Then they go to chemistry, one student gets a chemistry prize. Then they go to physics, one student gets a physics prize. So there's still three different stages. The first stage is in the math class. One of the kids is gonna get a prize. There was 30 kids to choose from. Then those kids go to their uh, chemistry class. And one of those students is going to get a prize. There's 30 students to choose from to get the chem prize. And then they're all gonna go to physics class and one student gets top of physics, one out of the 30, 30 to choose from. So 30 times 30 times 30 is 27,000 different ways that a math, chemistry and physics prize could be given to just one class of 30. Let's look at number six. And what I really want you to do is you should be pausing this, try to do it yourself. And then number six is a little bit complicated. So um, try it yourself. And then if you can't figure it out, unpause it and watch how I would do it. We're forming a three digit number. A three digit number means three different stages. Okay, so I've got three different stages. I only have these digits to choose from, right? I, I, those are the only digits I could choose to make a three digit number. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I've got six numbers that they give me to choose from. So A says, if repetition are not permitted, how many three digit numbers can be formed? So. How many numbers do I have to choose from, from these numbers to go into this stage? There are six of them. Once I choose one of these six, how many left is here? Five. And then four. So how many three digit numbers could you use from those six numbers given? 120. Okay. How many? numbers can you create and the restriction is it's got to be a number less than 400 so here's how we would do this still three stages okay we still have six numbers right these are the six that they give me you have to say what's the first number that i could put here or how many choices can i put here that would make my number less than 400 so for example i can't put a nine in that first stage because that would be a number 900 and something i can't put a seven in the first stage six or five the only numbers i could put in this first stage to make a number less than 400 is a two or a three so a two can my number could start with a two or it could start with a three that is, two possible choices that can go in that first stage. And that's the only restriction. It's gotta be a number less than 400. So I placed one of my six digits. What do I have left? I've got five digits left here and four digits here. That is going to be 40 possible numbers that I could create less than 400. Okay. How many three digit numbers can I create from these six numbers that are even? So remember even, this is the digit that determines even, or this is the stage. The even numbers that I have are two and six. So two or six go there. 
that means that there's two choices that would make my number even. There's no other restrictions. So out of my six numbers, these six numbers, I placed one here. I've got five to go here and four to go there. Again, that's going to give you 40 choices. Okay, let's do this last one, which is odd. How many odd three-digit numbers can you make based on only those six numbers? So if it's odd, the last digit determines even or odd. If I look at my numbers, I need to figure out which ones of those are odd. So a three could go there, a five, a seven, or a nine. There are four choices of numbers that can go there. That's the only restriction. Once I place a number to make it odd, I've got five numbers to choose from to go there, and then four numbers to choose from to go there. That's going to give you 80 different odd four-digit numbers you could make based on those numbers. Here's the last question, and then there's going to be a part two video. A vehicle license plate consists of three letters. So that's three stages, letter, 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 followed by three digits. Digit, digit, digit. So number, number, number. How many different license plates are possible if there are no restrictions on anything? So you say, how many letters do you have to choose from that could go in that stage? 26, 26, and 26. There's no restrictions. Repeats could happen. I could have a license plate AAA. Digits. It says there's no restrictions on digits. There are 10 digits from 0 to 9. So I've got 10 different numbers I could choose from to go there, 10 different choices of numbers to go there, and 10 different choices to go there. Because I could have a license plate AAA000, right? They didn't give me any restrictions. If you multiply that together, that is going to be 17,000, no, 17 million, 576,000 different license plates that would have three letters followed by three numbers. B. We're going to have the same thing. It's going to be three letters to start with but they give a restriction. No letters may be repeated. So how many choices of letters can go in that first stage? There are 26 letters. Once you place a letter, if it can't be repeated, you've got 25 and you've got 24. Then it was followed by three numbers. It never gave any restrictions on the numbers. You've got 10 numbers, choices that could go there, 10 digit choices that could go there, and there's 10 here. If you multiply that, you're going to get 15 million, 600,000 different license plates that would have three letters followed by three digits. Each letter is different. The last one letter, 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 number, number, number. It says the first digit, so here's my digit, cannot be zero, so not zero. That leaves nine possible numbers to go there. And then it says no digits can be repeated. So zero's back in the game here, right? Because the restriction on zero is only for this first digit. So zero's back in the game here. I've got zero through nine that I could place. That's 10 numbers, but I can't have a repeat. So whatever number I placed here, I can't put there. So that's going to be 10 minus one. And that would leave nine number choices to go there. In this last stage, there are 10 numbers, right? From zero through nine but I placed two numbers already, and it can't repeat, so I've got to take away two, and that would leave eight possible choices to go there. It never gave me any restrictions on my, on my letters, so 26 letters, 26, and 26. When you multiply that, you are going to get 11,389,000 
248 possible choices that there could be.